everyone, it's Yesenia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Budget with Books and Makeup. On this YouTube channel, I am talking about my financial journey. I am currently in my 30s, trying my hardest to clean up the giant financial mess that I made in my early 20s. So if this is content that appeals to you, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Hey, so today we are going over my August monthly budget. I do have some new subscribers, so if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, I will explain it in this video too. I am a full-time high school physical education teacher. I'm still on summer break, but in one week I go back. I'm so sad. We get paid bi-monthly, so my district, they pay us twice a month. We get paid on the 7th of every month and the 22nd of every month. I, I'm not the biggest fan. The last charter school that I worked at, it was the same thing, but we got paid on the 15th of every month and then the last day of every month which I honestly thought made more sense for monthly budgeting, but it is what it is. I have to budget from the 7th of every month to the 6th of the next month or whenever I get paid. So if the 7th falls on a weekend, then I'll get paid the Friday before. So typically it's from the 5th to the 7th of every month to the 4th to the 6th of every month. That's when I have to budget. It is currently August 6th and I'm supposed to get paid tomorrow, but I already got my paycheck today. Uh, yesterday, it was yesterday I got my paycheck. I'm like, well, okay then, I, I, I guess I'll just, you know, just go ahead and, and budget. I already filled out my monthly budget and that's because since I got paid two days earlier than I was supposed to get paid, I didn't want to like start you know, just spending money like crazy. So sometimes my dog likes to bark and I always edit out her barking. I just I just think that's courteous because, you know, I, I wanna be mindful of other people who have pets and, you know, whenever someone is barking, a dog is barking in a video or on TV, she always barks and I'm like, why, just why? So I just please understand that I will always edit out my dog's barking. All right, let's go ahead, let's go over the monthly budget. And I did actually make a couple of mistakes because I forgot there was one sinking fund that I needed to fulfill. So I need to go ahead and readjust some numbers. So I'll put that in, I'll readjust them now. Oh, well, first off, roll over. I plan on rolling over $500 from the previous month and that is my checking account buffer and I did roll that over. Okay, I, I, I know. It's supposed to be 42.18.90. So that's what it's supposed to say, I'll just. Now, I think you guys can see it a lot better. So for the month, I plan on bringing in the minimum 42.18.90. We are getting raises again, I believe on the 22nd. It's a new school year. The August 7th paycheck is the last paycheck for the previous school year. And then the 22nd paycheck is our new year. So we're supposed to get like, I think our step changes, not lane changes, the step changes. So. I don't know what that looks like, so I'm just budgeting the minimum amount to be on the safe side and that way I don't end up going in the red. Um, I also work part-time as a group exercise instructor, so I plan on bringing in $400 from the gym and that I always under budget because I always pick up shifts. So 400 is the minimum that I typically bring in, bring in every month. I don't plan on using any other kind of money, so like no cash back, no birthday money or whatever. So my total money that I'm allocating for this month is $5,118.90. My biggest expense, I pay rent. So I currently live in a one bedroom apartment in Chicago and my rent is $1,350. I love my landlords. I know that seems a little expensive, but my rent, they told me will never go up as long as I live here. So I'm actually saving a lot of money by living here. Because I would rather, imagine if I had, when I moved, I moved into an apartment and let's say the rent was $1,100, but then like in 2022, when everything skyrocketed, what, imagine if they had raised my rent to like $1,500. That happened to a lot of people. So I'm really grateful that, yes, I came into an apartment with slightly higher rent than I anticipated, but I'm so glad I'm here because it will never go up as long as I live here. Uh, AT&T, this bill actually just got sent to me today. It's like $208, so I was over budget by three bucks. So that's fine, next month I'll just budget 210. And AT&T is my phone and my internet service, so it's bundled together. Google Drive, this is my Google Drive storage, that is $1.99. I have this Scrib membership, it's a book subscription. So you get to listen to as many audiobooks as you would like and 
read as many ebooks as you would like for the whole month and it's $13.22. I personally think it's a much better deal than Audible. The downside is Audible literally has everything. Scrib doesn't, but they have a lot. I've been getting by with Scrib and I also have my Libby app. So if you don't know, Libby is an app where you can put in your library card and you can borrow eBooks and audiobooks from your local library through the Libby app. So between those two, I feel my audiobook and eBook and reading addiction. So that is why the name of my channel is Books and Makeup. I, I don't even, we're not even gonna talk about my makeup collection cause it's a lot y'all. I had to put myself on a makeup buying band. Ban. Zumba. I teach Aqua Zumba in order to keep my license to teach that format. I have to pay for the Zen membership, which is $43.94 a month. We're not going to talk about it. I already complained to them that is way too high and it is what it is. My insurance, so this is car insurance and renter's insurance. I think it was a dollar less last month, but I'm still budgeting $109.15. That's what it's been for the last five months or so. Discovery Plus is $5.44. Paramount Plus, I believe, is going up a dollar at $6.44. I don't mind because these are the only two TV streaming services that I pay for. So I have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Those are my parents' accounts and they just let me use them. ComEd, I don't know what the, at the, this is my electric bill. I don't know what it's gonna be this month. So I'm budgeting $85. I really hope it's no more than $85. I've had to run the AC. Uh, gas bill is $70, that's what I'm budgeting. It has been very low. It has been very low the last couple of months. It's definitely been under 70, but I budget 70 just in case. Work expenses, I'm going back to work. So that means I need some school and office supplies. So I am budgeting $60 for that. My total is $1,950.18 and I have $3,168.72 left over. So I take that remaining budget and now I am allocating the money to my variable expenses. So in the budget mom's budget by paycheck system, she has the word envelopes up here because that's what she uses. She uses physical cash and she stuffs her envelopes for her variable expenses. I call them variable expenses and that is because I am a credit card user. So what I do is I charge all these things to my credit card. I just pay the credit card off every week so that way the balances don't get too high and then I get the cash back and the points and whatnot. So I always pay off my credit card so I'm not like concerned about overcharging my credit card and then just letting the interest accumulate. Groceries, 375 is just not cutting it anymore. So I up my budget to $400. Yes, $400 for just me. I eat organic. I don't really eat anything that comes in a box. I put all my food in the fridge and the freezer. I don't really have that much food in my pantry. If you wanna take a look at what I eat, I have a Costco haul. I'll link that video in the description so you can have a, an idea of what I eat. But since I consume a high protein diet, my grocery bill is very expensive because meat is very expensive. It is what it is. Household, I originally budgeted $50, but I went to Target and bought a couple of things. I bought some protein bottle shakers, shakers, protein bottles, so I can make protein shakes. And I also bought like glass bowls so that way I can take them to work and when I make my lunch, reset the budget at $100. Cupcake, my darling child, she's my dog. She gets $120 every month. This pays for her food, uh, dental treats, if she has any toys that, she, that I wanna buy her and other things like that, her met her monthly medication, and then whatever is left over in this category gets put into her savings account. So she has two funds. She has her variable expenses and her sinking fund. Her sinking fund pays for her vet visits and then this pays for her monthly expenses. Beauty, so that's makeup, hair, nails, skincare, all that stuff. I budget 250 and that's because getting my nails done every month is like $90. We're not gonna talk about that. Um, well, every time I go get my nails done, it's $90. I live on the north side of Chicago. That, I'm paying north side prices. Car expenses, this used to be called gas, but I noticed that I wasn't just purchasing gas for the car and I was doing other car related things. So I just renamed it car expenses. Like last month I had to reload like my parking app and that was $20. So I just took it out of there cause that was a car expense. Eating out is $100. I have only been using like 60 to $70 of this 
monthly expense every month. So I'm really proud of myself for that, but I'm still budgeting a hundred because there are some times where I get to like $90 and there was a couple of times I went over. Personal, I'm budgeting $30. I also can use my birthday money for this, but there hasn't really been anything that I wanna buy. So we'll see. I just, I just put it in there. So that way, if I wanna buy myself something, it comes out of that. The total is $1,150, so $1,150. Yes, I know that is a lot of money for one person for variable expenses. I see other people with their variable expenses and they're using less than half of what I'm using. But I mean, I have a dog, my grocery bill is super high, my gas like for my car is a little high too. It, it is what it is. I have $2,018.70 left over. Okay, sinking funds, that's up next. I am stuffing $80 into car repairs. So for those who don't know, sinking funds are mini savings account for things that don't come up monthly, but that do come up eventually. So you put a little money away each month. That way when the expense comes, you're prepared because you already have the money saved. So car repairs, we know cars need maintenance and my car repair sinking fund has been depleted like five times at this point, but I am so glad that I have it. It has saved my behind at least five times. So if you have a car, even if it's new, I still recommend putting a little something away because after about four to five years, those parts, they need to be replaced and you don't wanna be stuck with a $1,000 car repair and that's actually cheap and then you don't have the money for it. Eye appointment, my eye appointment is this Wednesday and for those who don't know, I am blind as a bat. I have astigmatism in both eyes, I have to wear bifocals, my right eye is nearsighted and my left eye is farsighted. Yeah, I got, I got some pretty messed up eyes. So my eye appointment, because I pay for the appointment, I pay for a new pair of glasses typically, and I pay for a year supply of contacts. This is why my eye appointment is so expensive. I pay for a year supply of contacts. That alone is like $250 and it ends up being $800 total. So that's what it was last year. So I'm putting $50 in it this time and that'll get me to 850 and I should be good for this Wednesday. See, every year I know I have an eye appointment in August so I put a little money away every single month and then that way when it comes time to buy my glasses, I don't have to pick between paying rent and buying my glasses, cause I kinda need both. Christmas gets 95. Don't, don't get me started on Christmas. This year, literally everybody's getting a gift card and I don't care. But I'm still putting money away so I can buy the gift cards for everyone. Vacation, I like to go on vacation every year. So I'm putting $120 away and that was because when I went on vacation in June, I ended up spending like $400 and it was completely unbudgeted. So I want to put away a little bit more money so that way I have $1,500 when I go on vacation next year. Taxes appointment. So this is to pay my CPA for his services. This is not to pay for taxes and that is $25. It's $180 every time I go see him. He hasn't raised his prices, thank goodness. I mean, obviously I would still see him because he gets me a lot of money back. If an expense is over $150, then I create a sinking fund for it because I can find $150 in my typical budget. Once it gets over 150, then it becomes a little, uh, so that is why I have a sinking fund for it. Tattoo, I wanna get another tattoo. I've been going on a tattoo kick people. So I'm putting $30 in there. Cupcake, this is her sinking fund. It automatically gets $100 and then whatever is left over from the 120. That way it's just a rolling sinking fund and she always has money. I never want her to not have money. Y'all, she got an ear infection this summer and it was $470. $470! I'm so glad I had the money saved. And then I forgot something. I forgot I have an Amex Gold credit card and it does have an annual fee of $250. I created a sinking fund for it so I can pay for the fee. I have membership points, so I get membership points. So it'll ask me if I wanna use the membership points to pay for the fee. I probably will do that next year, but I still wanna make sure that I have money set aside just in case I don't have enough points. So my total for my sinking funds is 520. And then I need, this is where I need to readjust the numbers because I for, completely forgot about that. 
So let's do 2018.70 minus 520. There is $1,498.70 left. I'm going to fix these numbers. I have 1498.70 left. So I'm gonna minus 583. So what's going to be an, a debt payment or an extra debt payment still because it's the month of August. I'm gonna put $915.70 towards my student loans and then that's gonna be what it is. And then I have 583 left over. I'm gonna put, well, $80 into my Roth IRA and then the $3 is to pay for the Roth IRA membership because I use Acorns. So let's take 83 away from that. So I'm, wait, 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 1498.70 minus 915.70. Yeah, 583, let's subtract 83. And then I should have $500 left over. And I like to keep $500 as my checking account buffer. So that just stays in my account. When I do my budget, I do a zero-based budget, but I include my rollover in my budget. I know a lot of people say they don't like the zero-based budget because they don't like their account at zero, and that's not exactly what that means. Zero-based budget just means that your income minus your expenses equals zero. Make your rollover a part of your zero, right? So even the purpose of my $500 is just to sit there just in case I go over budget and I need a little extra money. That's what it's there for. That way I don't go into the negative and then I overdraft. So that's the purpose of the $500. My account is never at zero. It just means every dollar is accounted for. So I'm starting with 518, 5,118.90 minus 1,958.18 minus 11.50 minus 5.20 minus 915.70 minus 83 minus 500. See, I included the 500 in the, in the equation. So I'll still get zero, even though my account is not at zero. I'm gonna do the math and hopefully I get zero. I made a boo-boo. I wrote down here the correct number and then when I came up here, I forgot to write the number correctly and I was off by two cents. I'm so glad I caught it early. I'm like, why am I off by two cents? Something isn't right. <laughs> so now I have a whole bunch of scribbles all over, but that's okay. Um, I found the mistake and then I did end up getting zero in the long run. All right, that is my August monthly budget. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm really excited. I'm getting my my uh, my raise this month and we don't have to pay union dues for another hopefully month and a half or so. So I get a little extra money that I get to put towards debt. And I, I mean, I'm really going to start making giant progress towards my student loans. My goal is to have them paid off by December, 2024. I don't know if it'll actually happen, but I really want to make it happen. I really do. All right, everyone, I'm going to go eat dinner. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. What are your plans for the month of August? Let's chat down in the comments below. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.